Hello, hello, beautiful people, mi gente bella. Welcome, welcome to another edition of Stan 10 Says, where we talk about everything from Roblox to relationships, everything in between, and the overall journey of life. I am excited, as always, to bring you all another edition of the show, but also another wonderful guest. Boom, boom. What's good? Um, but yeah, so I was, I was like, oh, wait, I wasn't ready for that. So, but yes, I'm excited. Oh so we're going to do this. We're going to um, have a great conversation. But we do want y'all to know that there had been a little break, you know what I'm saying, with some episodes. If y'all noticed, um, that's because life has been lifing. You know what I mean? So some things been going down. And it's also summer. Summer has been summering. That's also been my other one. Yes. It's hot as hell. It is so hot. It's hot as shit. So y'all who don't have ACs, that needs to change. So like that fan is not enough. It's just not enough. So it's a lot. But also, uh, somebody got a master's degree now. <laughs> I ain't gonna say no names, you know what I mean? But you're looking at her uh, or hearing her, you know, wherever uh, it's y'all getting us from. But I'm yeah. excited. Yes, there's been a lot going on. May, and so I wanna like, also shout out all the other graduates, the class of 2020 fell, cause, uh, and my babies, because there was also my babies at uh, Digital Arts, they graduated too. So it's just that year, you know what I'm saying? We got the grads and it's the season of dads. And so, you know, we're doing all of it. All and I got me a dad. On, you know what I'm saying, on set, as well as does all these other great things. So, you know, could you tell these wonderful people about you? Because I've known you forever, but I know they're getting to know you. Forever is a little too long for knowing <laughs> Shut you, up. but you know. You're right. Um, I mean, my name is Melvin. Usually go by, she knows me by Junior, family knows me by Junior. A lot of people know me by Wally lately. Um, you know, for those of you who don't know, I work at Huntington Bank. I'm about 34 right now. Like I said, father, two kids. Yes. Um, on the side, I got plenty of hobbies on the side. Do uh, maybe the main one, I do my sneaker thing, do customized shoes, purses, pretty much anything that I can get my hands on. I just like to, you know, kind of reimagine, redesign. Love Furniture, that. especially, is a big one. Um, but all around, I just do a little bit of everything. See, and that's the one I don't hear, though. The, the, the shoes, I've seen that, but, like, you know, maybe other things, but furniture? Furniture, I mean, being apartment-based for a long period, it makes it difficult to do it. Mm. But I've done a few pieces. I've just never promoted the pieces because the page was always a sneaker thing. Okay. But I think oh, when I start relaunching and rebutting out some of the stuff that I got there, I think I'm just going to stray away from sneakers in general to just go full customization because it's like i said i do a lot of things i mean i've done wallets purses i've done desks dressers built my own station for all of my equipment um, closets like come on I mean, you name it we just get into it so let's go okay cool but you know that's for a little later date <laughs> yeah exactly no but that's that is super cool though so definitely launching into that world and you oh, did, God, yes. you also mentioned wally the name i feel like that makes me think of wally the the robot? Oh, the robot? I love yeah, Wally yeah. the Robot. It's one of my favorite Disney movies, man. <laughs> yes. That and Chicken Little, but Wally the Robot, yeah, that's, 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 I mean, that's big on where the name came from. Really, it started with um, Jen's kids. They used to call, um, they used to talk about my freaking feet being so big, saying they look like watermelons. Then watermelon was a thing, and then my dude Vic kind of intertwined Wally with it, started calling me Wally a lot, and then Wally Melon stuck, and now it's just there. I just got hella people calling me Wally all the time, and I'm just like, just an answer to it. Yeah, exactly. Like, right, That's so who I am now. Yes, okay. But you do, so you do all the artwork, and like you said, you're eventually going to enter into the world of customization, hopefully, you know, like be able to do that even more. Oh, yeah. But you also are in banking? Yeah, so like um, I've been working for Huntington going on three years already now. Mm. Um, just basically a banker there. But, I mean, besides that one, I'm also a segment leader in the uh, customer experience department for the district of Cuyahoga. Mm. Um, now starting to be a lead partner in the Pride BRG that we have for any of the Pride events and whatnot. So getting a part of, you know, helping organize that, getting my hands into that as well. And then a new one that just popped up, um, someone just reached out to me to try to be a recruit for our Ola BRG, which is our Spanish BRG within Huntington. So, you know, a lot of a lot of titles in there, okay. a lot of stuff. But, I mean, the networking, the reaching out, the, um, I mean, like I was telling you earlier, the meeting that we had for the service segment, I mean, just for the segment leaders alone was just, you know, allowed me as just a banker to be around all the branch managers, district managers, regional managers, uh, marketing teams, you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, you know, it's a lot of stuff, but 
it's it's one hell of an experience right now. Yeah, I bet it is. You're talking to a lot of folks. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of stuff. I mean, again, just going to that meeting on Wednesday, being down in Akron, being being around like that group of people, all those, you know, big heads around, you know, you just kind of get motivated to come back and do more with it. Right. And for Huntington to at least, you know, not only trust me to be a segment leader for an entire district, but to actually go to these meetings, listen to my voice, take my input, any um, adjustments, tweaks, stuff like that, hearing from other branches, from other districts within the entire region. Like it's, it's a huge, it's huge. Like I, a lot of times I kind of don't really see it that way, but then when we get to stuff like that, it's like, okay, this is a little bigger than I kind of feel like it is half the time. Man, what? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you can't minimize that, though. You're doing some work out here. I mean, I think that's kind of just how I've always been. I mean, I've always, like, minimized a lot of the stuff that I do, which I kind of got to get away from, not to, you know, get big-headed with anything, but at yeah. the same time, at least understanding that some of the stuff that I'm doing is actually bigger than what it is and yeah, understanding that and, and – not only taking pride in that, but, you know, taking a sense of accomplishment that comes with some of these things and allowing myself to actually soak that in a little more. Absolutely. I'm not saying, but it is true, though. I mean, I don't, I'm don't. i definitely not a person too big on, like, the credit part either. I yeah, agree. like, it's just, it's hard to sit there and be like, like, people will be like, oh, you know how to draw, you know how to do this. And it's like, mm, yeah, that's a hobby. Mm, yeah, that's a thing. But, I mean, I also hear a lot that, like, some people with certain things tend to downplay stuff, especially, like, growing up in certain ways. So, I don't know. Could be a big thing, but, I mean, I just like to try and stay as humble as possible when it comes to some things. Yeah, but it's also a big testament because I know you to be more of an introvert, sir. So, like, you getting tested out here? <laughs> I mean, it's weird because, like, I'm a people person whose battery runs out quickly. So, yeah. <laughs> let's just put it that way. Like, yes. I'm cool with people. I get along with people. I can converse with people, chill, right. bullshit, whatever, you know, the whole nine. I could get in front and do, I mean speeches in front of crowds do whatever i need to do but at the same time it's like being around a lot of humans kind of drains me yeah <laughs> so you know and so yeah. it's a it's a it's, it's, it's uh, omnivert or whatever the hell that technical term is i guess i'm, I'm somewhere around there probably right. said the wrong thing because i hate english <laughs> but, but yeah whatever but it is true though yeah i i do get that though because like we can get depleted you know i mean and it does take a lot of energy especially in your case if you're going to be dealing with all different you know, networking at all different types of levels with different individuals. Yeah, because, I mean, even, like, even at work, like, you sit in here, you deal with the 300-plus people that you see on a daily basis, plus then you're sitting there organizing uh, something else over here, something for another group over there, visiting some, another branch over here, and then you got to come out, and then in person, well, outside of work, now you got your other stuff you got going on, meeting over here, meeting with this person over here, trying to connect on a sneaker project here or a, a giveaway over here, so... You know, it's a lot of stuff, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, being a people person, liking to connect with different people, liking to kind of get that experience, picking the brains of everybody. You know, I'm always one person to just sit there and try to gather or learn or take whatever I can from every single individual that's out there. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, only stupid people ignore the minds of anybody else around them. You can learn something from somebody. Mm -hmm. You're stupid if you don't really just keep an open mind to it. Yeah. I can't co sign exactly. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know why I don't call you, that. but you know. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to call it like it. But I know, mm -hmm. but I agree, though. But it, and there is a level of ignorance that goes along with that, too. God, yeah. Like yeah, you definitely got to be able to step outside. Come on now. Because there yeah. is a lot that you could be gaining, like, definitely for sure. And speaking of that, though, what I also thought was interesting was okay, so they ask you to help out with these ERGs, though. So you got the, the ERGs, pride one, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and all that. Like, pride was that always one. your thing? Or like. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, for some reason, I always end up gravitating towards leadership roles without actually having titles like that. So for now, having stuff like that just kind of comes into play. Right. It's not so much the specifics of what the group is. It's just so much like I've already been involved with, like with Huntington, I've already been involved with the three different pride festivals that I've been in there. So naturally just getting with the people yep. and kind of just having a voice like that, I guess, it's just kind of, it kind of just pulls me into those directions a lot with certain things, which, I mean, I never really want them, but I end up seeking them out somehow or getting involved in them somehow. Right. And, you know, I end up enjoying it because, I mean, it's like I said, I like, t you know, teaching, learning, doing things, showing correct, not so much correcting, but just, you know, enhancing or refining. So getting involved with a lot of these different things in these different ways, you know, I get to network a lot more. Right. And kind of just 
you know, just sharpen the mind a lot more doing these things. Which, yeah. I mean, there's always something I like doing. Oh, absolutely. But then, like, also, it, but is that a specific cause that you do happen to care about, though, like yourself? I mean, for the last year or so, mental health, like the last, I guess the last two years, mental health has been one of the biggest ones. I mean, I've gravitated towards that so quickly and so heavily that I think that's kind of one of my biggest ones. And I can't, I guess that's kind of a thing that pulls me to a lot of these groups. Right. Because even with pride, I mean, I've already seen it close to me with certain like relatives and whatnot to where like it takes a it's, even nowadays it still takes a lot for some people to just be able to be who they are yeah and for ha and to have the people close to them that they well that they think are close to them actually accept them for who they are yeah. and i'm one that i really don't care at all in any way shape or form what it is that you like dislike or whatever i'm just gonna i'm gonna talk to you i'm gonna treat you like a like the human that you are. Right. But to see that some people still kind of have an issue with certain things is just weird. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to stuff like that and being so big on, like, you know, mental health and understanding and learning, because, I mean, there's still so much crap that I deal with on a daily basis that I kind of got to pull myself out of on a regular. Being able to try and take that and learn what I can from anywhere else and the things that they've dealt with personally to kind of help, you know, plug and play with other people as well to help them out. That's kind of my pull when it comes to a lot of these things. It's just, hey, let me try to help you understand certain things as easy as possible. Right. Because I know there's a lot of things out there that can kind of get overwhelming. Absolutely. And I do love hearing that because when it comes to that, I mean, identity is, you know, it's already a lot, you know, to be able to like form, figure out, you know what I mean? Have celebrated, like you said, or supported. And here's the thing too, like if we're going to talk about identity, you yourself are a man and also you're a Latino man. You know what I'm saying? Check, which I happen yeah. to, you know what I'm saying? I happen to know, right? Yeah, it's still, does that still check out? All right, yeah, cool. <laughs> but so, you know, and I know that. And so I know that, you know, that's something that Latinos, we still, you know what I mean? We still trying to, we're still yeah. trying to warm up to these ideas of like. Because yeah, I mean, when you really look at Latinos and everything, you really, it's, it's weird because, you know, we have the Taino side of us, we have the Spaniard side of us, and we have the Afro -American, African American side of us that a lot of people tend to neglect and kind of dismiss. Yep. Or just be ignorant to not, you know, calling you ignorant, but just the fact that you just don't know about it. So yeah. <clears throat> we we literally have it to where we can kind of meld and blend with each group, but even with that, we don't, besides our Latino side, we don't really have a group to kind of go to. So when you're talking with a lot of people and you're dealing with a lot of different things, it's hard to really have an input or a voice when it comes to certain criteria for stuff. Yeah. When it comes to, you know, when the uh, Black Lives Matter movement was kind of was a thing coming up and, you know, still a huge thing, still a big voice is out there, you know, as a Hispanic who has, you know, that that's that blood inside of you to still kind of look as if you don't really have a voice in that. Right. by a lot of people you yep. know it's it's kind of weird to try and navigate that side and then at the same time you know still trying to navigate when it comes to certain things on our you know our taino side and a lot yep. of things that go on with that and you know kind of just getting pushed aside when it comes to you know having our voice and being able to actually help and assist and do what we can to help each each side of us that we have Right. No, and I agree because, yeah, and that's especially in that mix that we're describing is, of course, Puerto Rican, you know, for those who are unaware. Jesus. Um, And I did have another guest like Rosa not too long, you know, not too long ago yeah. was also telling us about, you know, historically and how like that plays a role. But I feel you on we still even with that, even Puerto Ricans being this whole mix, <laughs> having all this history, having all these roots, having all these connections, we will Bro. look at other people's issues as not our issues. And we don't yeah. always see connections to these other communities that really were a part of that or that we should be uplifting at best like or at least you know so you know it's definitely I, I appreciate that you at least name that because it is definitely something I've seen as well because yeah, you get a lot of people that just choose to stay ignorant towards things and it's just like at the end of the day you as a human you know you're not really obligated to do things but at least for yourself right. you should be trying to learn as much as you can especially about your own history but I mean we see that a lot especially in this country in the American country like People stay so ignorant towards their actual roots here. Yeah. It's only the ones that really have that connection with the old heads growing up, like our grandparents and their yeah. parents ahead that kind of still have us deep-rooted in a lot of what we have. So we naturally have that 
desire growing up to learn and seek out and figure it out. But then you got the other generation kind of below us that's still even more Americanized than what we were growing up. Oh, yeah. That kind of just brushes it off and just stays ignorant to it because this is what they have in front of them. Why do they care about this? Ooh, so then true. when you get people, you know, some of our, some people, you know, a lot of the Puerto Ricans, Hispanics, or even, you know, you got like Dominicans, you got all the other, everything else that's out there. You get some of them that just choose to stay ignorant to it because they just don't want to deal with it as opposed to, hey, you need to learn this. You yeah. kind of enrich yourself with what's going on. Right. And with that, you know, guarantee like a lot of people, if you actually take the time to actually learn your history and get involved a little more, you're going to want to stay active. Yeah. And a lot of things that's going on because you're just going to love learning what it is that really makes you, you. Absolutely. Oh, but I agree. But I definitely feel like you are, especially speaking to that removal though. Like we definitely are starting to get more removed <laughs> from what it is. And like, like literally, and also like geographically, historically, like all of that. And so like, unfortunately, yes, it makes it easier to like, not, yeah. you know, we feel like, you know, more disconnected. And honestly, we are, some of that is also intentional because yeah. it has become harder to stay there in Puerto Rico. Like I would love to be there like versus yeah, I'm not even lie. trying to visit over there. It's just like, bro, like, do you want to go visit? Do you want to take the risk? Do you want to go and deal with everything that's over there? But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I want to go back. I want to see what, you know, what's going on on my Island and whatnot. But at the same time, it's just like chaos. Yeah. You want to dive into the chaos to take what you can from it. Oh, yeah. And a lot of times it's very rewarding, but then, you know, you still got to weigh the options that's going on there. So I agree, though, because I remember going and like, you know, loving it. You know, what I mean, because, of course, you're going to see the sights and it's going to be this great thing. But there was literally a protest happening like in all San Juan when I was here. People wondering, they're like, oh, why is it blocked off? You know, especially the tourists, you know, who had no idea like what's been unfortunately going on. And I remember specifically when it was when they were trying to protest, Rose, yo, they were trying to get the governor out. Mm -hmm. So it was like especially people are like in the streets. It was admirable to see, too. You know, what I'm saying that people wanted to like that much that they cared that much about what was going on. But it's also that tragic that like people aren't able to just enjoy where they live because there's always something that they were having to fight against. Uh, yeah, and I mean, it's, it's based on your mindset. You could go down there and think, oh my God, this is chaos. This is terrible. This is awful. Or like you said, at the same time, you just think like, oh, this is admirable. This is, you know, this is something that I kind of want to see, want to get involved with, get, you know, understand a little more because, you know, you, you just, depending on you as a person, you, you want to feel like you're making a change or making a difference or you want to be a part of something or at least understand right. where this is coming from as opposed to just brushing it off like a lot of people are going to choose to do. True. And that's the thing, too. So that's why I think it was dope that you said. So when it comes to these issues, you know what I'm saying, there's definitely different things that you care about, but mental health stuck out to you. And you were like, that especially has been the thing that you have most, you know, intentionally been wanting to like get yourself involved in, contribute to, and what have you. Did that, like, where'd that come from? I mean, that's basically comes from just my own personal things that I had to deal with for, I guess, that I've just been pushing off my entire freaking life. Got to a point to where I just, you know, I, it just finally clicked to where it's like, hey, I got, I got to figure this out. I got to do something about this. I got to understand myself a little more. Right. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm sitting here. I'm in a freaking eight, nine, ten-year relationship, two kids, disconnect from my family, not really seeing people, not really understanding, not really hanging out, not really, you know, being involved. You get to a point to where you as a person, you start to understand, okay, I'm not I'm not okay mentally and I have to figure out why. And I and I think that was a big thing for me is just I finally hit that breaking point to where it's just like, all right, I need to just let out what I need to let out. Right. And it got to a point to where I literally had to sit down with my father, told him you know, a percentage of all the shit I dealt with growing up, right. sat there with my mother, told her a percentage of a lot of the shit I dealt with growing up, um, and kind of trickled out from there. Mm. And it's a lot, because what a lot of people don't understand, and even some people that do understand, but not to the full extent, is like, when you get to that point to where everything is pretty much fucked up up there, yeah. It oozes out. Yeah. It's like it's like Greek fire. No matter what you're doing, it's going to keep burning everything around you. Mm. And you're not going to be able to put it out. Right. You need to learn how to contain it. You need to understand it. You need to get to that point to where you want to. You can't just have someone tell you. And you can't just kind of force yourself to do it. Right. It literally has to get, it's literally going to get to a point to where you're just like, okay, shit got to change. Yeah. 
And for me, always being that person that likes to teach, know, understand, it just, like everything else, it just pulled me in deeper. And the more I started to understand myself, the more I started to learn about other people, the more I started to figure out how other things work. It just kept pulling me and pulling me and pulling me in to where I'm at the point that I'm at now to where, you know, anybody needs to talk, I'll talk to them. You know, kind of putting out there, posting out there on my Instagram. Like, I was never really active on social media. But if you start to gravitate towards, like, where you see my personal page, you'll start to see more and more that I'm not staying quiet anymore. I'm letting out what needs to be let out. And not in a necessarily toxic way, but in a right. way to where it's just like, I could care less what you think of me personally. You're going to know. You're going to mm-hmm. hear my voice now. And let's and go. That's my biggest pull towards where I'm at right now when it comes to mental health. Come on. And the thing is, and speaking of admirable, come on, like that's that not only is that so admirable just to know that you were finally able to recognize that and do something about that. But then the thing is too, like the courage it takes to do that. Because I mean Yeah, because I mean it's it's I'm never really I'm not a confrontational person uh-huh. per se. Right. At least I wasn't before. <laughs> forced into it holy shit yeah i wasn't be, i really was not a confrontational person before i mean even doing like armed security and whatnot i was always more of like a mediator when it came to a lot of things yeah now i'm very i don't want to say like annoyingly in your face but like my voice is heard now like and it's direct and it's not even like in a you know hey i'm preachy 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 it's no you're just you're gonna hear me yeah it's blunt it's direct like you said um, yeah, I get called an asshole by a shit ton of people, but hell, I don't care because the people that are calling me an asshole aren't really worth my time anyways. If you're just going to sit here and not understand where I'm coming from and just put a label on me, like, who cares at that point? Yeah. My biggest pull right now is just where I'm at and if I got my peace. Yeah. Like, do I have my peace? My biggest thing in life is peace. Like, I need my peace. Yeah. If you're disturbing my peace, then I can't have you around. Right. And I, that's... And it's huge because it's like, it's like I said, like, if not, it starts to trickle on other people. And I can already see early with my son how my anxiety, my panic attacks, my depression, my lack of mental fortitude had already trickled to him. Yeah. And I mean, that's a, that was a big one in itself, just kind of seeing him and his, and his different tics and his stress and his turning red and the pulling of the hair and his screaming and his anger, like my anger reflecting through him. Yeah. Like I always hate the cliche, like, Oh, my kid saved me. But that's one to where it was just like, Holy shit. I kind of yeah. see it more. Yep. And I mean, I, I fucking, I sure as hell ran into my karma when I was dating this one girl and got to see a lot of what my explosive anger looked like, my lack of the mental fortitude, my inability to deal with my problems. I got to see my reflection in this immature person mm. and not, you know, to say she's immature for not knowing how to handle it, but just she, she was just immature. And I got to see my you, my younger side and my ignorant side and a, a lot in that. And that was a big part of what it was because getting to see your not a lot of people get the ability to see themselves live in person mm. and I got to and as terrible as it was and as fucked up as I came out of that relationship at you know it was I really hate the word blessing but god damn it was a word it was, it was a blessing because I got to come out of that with an idea of okay this is what I need to fix mm. or this is what I need to start approaching directly Wow. And I mean, and now we're here two years later, still figuring shit out. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, we're always piecing it together, y'all. Like, oh, right. It is definitely girl. a journey. But like, ooh, you definitely said a whole word. You know what I'm saying with that? Because I feel like, you know, relationships do help. You know what I mean? You already, there are certain ways things that reflect back. You know what I mean? But that's going to be, that's going to be one. And, but it's also interesting to see what relationship you attracted based on where you was at. You know what I mean? Because I've done that also. I've looked back at like, Previous partners, like, I'm not really sure God, yes. <laughs> where I was at. You know what I mean, mentally? <laughs> God, yes, because it's just like, I already knew going into that relationship. I'm just like, all right, next relationship I'm in, I'm just going to be that 
you know, take care of my partner and do everything that person needs and not really worry about myself type. I want to see where this goes being this way. Yeah. Because coming from my previous relationship with my kid's mom, you know, coming out of that, I felt like I was highly, well, the way I was talked to and the way I was approached or the way I felt like, let me put it this way, the way I felt like I was approached in that relationship, nothing I did came off as good enough. I never really took care of my partner properly from what I was being told. I never did what I needed to do as a father from what I was being told. I never tried to understand my partner. I never cared for my partner properly from what I was told. So I'm looking at this relationship like, okay, I'm going to go into this next one. I'm going to take the mindset that no matter what's going on, no matter how angry I am, no matter what's going on, I'm not going to take that approach. I'm just going to worry about my partner. And in doing so, I neglected myself and kept trying to piece together this time bomb that was in front of me. And even after explosion, after explosion, after explosion, I kept trying to put that shit back together. And I got to learn so much from that to where that's bullshit. Yeah. My previous partner was bullshit. All the partners before them kind of had the same thing. And then from there, now I'm at a point to where even being the way that I am, and a lot of people tell you when it comes to relationships, I'm always down for a real one. But I'm also at a point right now to where getting into one just terrifies the shit out of me. All right. And I could care less how good I think somebody is. I'm not taking that step. Yeah. And that's one of the things that, again, still working on right now. Yep. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> like, I must say, it was so much it took me. I was like, hold on. I was like thinking about stuff. Like, you had me. Yes. Because, yes, I mean, it, it, it's definitely, it is absolutely true. But I also just think like that neglecting piece, man. Because it's, I mean, like it is good you know like to prioritize it really is but like i feel you though like so it is easy to also get lost in that especially if you heard because what i think was really great about what you shared right is that you were getting feedback that was letting you know you weren't showing up enough so of course you're like all right well, what, what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna try to show up more you know and i feel like that means that i should be present more i should do what i need to do but then that didn't translate to being able to also still be there for yourself like and yeah. it takes its toll. And then, like, now the relationship is suffering, <laughs> which you were trying to save all along. Yeah, and it does. Because, like, it's it's so weird because, like, you're sitting there, you get feedback from one person, and you're trying to figure out are they being legitimate or are they just immature as well. And, I mean, getting back to where it got to the point to where I finally started to, I won't say heal, but to, like, fix some of the pieces within myself, I got to start to notice a lot more outside. So even when it came to, you know, having a better relationship with my kid's mother and seeing, like, hey, I can tell you're fucked up too and you're not showing it and to have that one-on-one with her and to get the reaction that I did not to really fully disclose or anything but to get the reaction that I did and finally hearing back from her that no you were a good father you were a good partner you did do all the things that you needed to do but she was at a place to where she couldn't appreciate it properly now you're looking at 10 years of Mm -hmm. you being mentally beaten down, fucked up, abused in a way to where, no, they weren't doing it intentionally. And no, in all honesty, knowing the shit that she's been through, it's I cannot blame her and say, hey, it's your fault right, that right. you were this way because you had shit that you had to work on, but you didn't know how to either. Right. I understand that because I had shit I had to work on that I didn't know how to either. So no, I'm not going to sit here and blame her for dealing with our relationship the way she did because we were both kids 18 23 we grew up together figured shit out separated figured more shit out you know and now we have that relationship to where yeah we can talk about everything peacefully without trying to cut each other's head off yep and it got to the point to where we actually could get the proper feedback from each other Mm. And be able to help each other figure out the next step for the next relationships that we're going to get into. Right. And I mean, at the end of the day, that's all you that's all you really can do as a human is just help each relationship that you have. Regardless, like, no, me and her are not getting back together because we know that when it comes to me and her, the way we view life and the way we view relationships we're going to mentally fuck each other up regardless of how healed we are as individuals. So we understand that now. There's no more forcing the relationship. There's no right. more, hey, we have kids together, let's make this work type thing. No. 
we understand that now, regardless of what other people want and say. Yep. And it take and it, you can take that aspect with other relationships, parents, siblings, right, right, kids, everything like that. You know what I mean? And, and then going from there, you take everything else. I got this. I never really like dismiss my dad as a father, but growing up with the mother that I had, I never got to appreciate a lot of the shit that my dad did growing up because of the voices that I had growing up. Oh. So now being in that same position and being with those type of women and understanding how they can be, I understand more what my dad dealt with to a certain, you know, to a degree when dealing with my mom. Yeah. And when trying to be a parent to us. Yep. And inheriting five kids from the woman that he ended up with while raising the two kids while stumbling upon another kid. And yeah, there's some shit that he did that was fucked up because he didn't know what he was doing either growing up. Right. He was growing while we were growing. Yep. So at the end of the day, it's just like no idea where I was trying to get to with that. But <laughs> at the end of the day, <clears throat> I got to appreciate the way my father was able to raise us. Yep. I got to appreciate a lot of the lessons that I got from my father. Yep. A lot of the uh, traditions, that's the fucking word. A lot of the traditions I got to instill with my kids now. Yeah. And it's crazy to hear that even after seeing my son have those flashes of my stress and anger become the kid that he is right now, only at 11 years old. And to get the praise from other parents, like, your kids are so good, your kids are so smart, your kids are so well-behaved. But to be able to see them still be free and enjoy the shit out of their life. Right. Like they're in Philadelphia in a swimming pool right now, living it up. They were in New York recently. They're probably going to be in Mexico sometime this year. Right. My kids are enjoying their fucking life. Yep. But at the same time, my kids got those respectful lessons that I got from my father. Right, right. And so... You know, you get to that point with those relationships to where you get to fully appreciate and understand and and just love the shit out of how certain people were with you. Right. But in turn, you start to look back at certain relationships and wonder, why the fuck did this other parent turn out this way? Why were you more fo why were you less focused on my studies and more focused on me doing your job as a parent and checking on your other kid? Why were you sitting here with this man that you chose over your kids and allowed him to be the way he was with us growing up. Mm. Which is crazy because I f hated the shit out of my stepfather growing up. I got in fights with him, fist fights, arguments, all types of shit. I never got along with him. <laughs> but if you look at it today, I get along with him better than I do my own mother. Mm. And, and growing up, you start to learn shit like that. And you start right. to be able to see it ahead of time when it comes to new people that comes around you. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. But I, and I definitely think like it is a lot to try to put in perspective. Like, you know, now we are definitely trying to take from what we learned from our parents. You know what I'm saying? And there's gaps there. <laughs> but then like, and now we're trying to put those pieces back together now as parents. You know what I mean? So like, like you said, we're literally doing the reflecting and the execution at the same time, which is a lot to do. But I, I definitely wholeheartedly agree with you. And I think, you know, what is also great that you shed light on is that, and so it's good for us to notice it can come from all sides. Cause I am a very big on this show. Like, you know, as the woman that I am, I'm like, oh yes. And I'm all about women empowerment and all that. But I mean, I want to be clear that I love that we're having an intentional conversation about how, but women can also be harmful, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, we also need to take accountability, you know what I mean? For like the role that can be played and how men's mental health is very important for real. And it's impacted by a lot of different things. And there is a lot that can happen. And you have talked about a lot of it. You know what I mean? Not just from previous like relationship experiences, from what happened with your parents. And then like it, it, that parallel of like what went on with your dad and how you weren't even always able to fully appreciate him. And now being a dad that wasn't always appreciated either, you know? And then like, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, that's a, that's a super interesting thing. You know what I mean? To be living out. And on top of that, what your son went through, which is... Yeah, I mean, all of it's huge because, I mean, it's like you said, both sides are terrible. Both, both sides can be great at the same time. Oh, yeah. There's potential for either way. <laughs> we yep. blame each other for a lot of shit, but at the end of the day, you're never really going to get to where you want to until you just straight take accountability for your own shit. Right, whatever your role is. And then when other people are trying to bring bullshit towards you, you're probably not going to care as much. You're just going to dismiss them a lot quicker. Right. Which is kind of where I'm at. It's like, 
yeah, I just take accountability for all my shit. Yeah, I was fucked up at a certain point. Right. Yeah, because, you know, you reacted the way that you did. I ended up reacting the way that I did. And instead, I should have just cut it off earlier as opposed to just being an asshole for this period of the relationship. And then it got to a point to where the relationship couldn't mend at all. And, you know, I was taking some shit out, you know, verbally when it came to, like, my kids or just being dismissive or just being unattentive because I was so pissed off or so frustrated for feeling certain ways on how certain things were going on to yep. now understanding like okay I gotta I gotta take responsibility for my own shit handle my own shit and just worry about my own shit absolutely and just, instead of just playing the blame game anymore because I mean at the end of the day all you're doing is wasting time sitting there trying to say hey you did more right. than what I did so let no yeah. The end of the day is just like yeah I fucked up I'm gonna do better but if I but if you see that they're not doing better fuck it just get out and Absol- that's it. And that's what I love because I feel like the accountability is what's going to lead to action. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, like you're like you saying. The other thing is, too, like, what I appreciate about what you also said is that y'all really could, like, we all have our flaws. You know what I mean? So, like, and we all have our things that we bring to the table, good and bad. You know what I mean? So, like, and we got to be willing to accept both of those things. But also that we could possibly be in a relationship with someone that may not be able to appreciate it or may not have the capacity to, you know? Yeah. And like, and knowing that that's also okay to recognize and yeah. something to know to walk away from if it's not changing and like not trying to make it something yeah. that it might not be. Yeah. Cause I mean, she, I've been through all types of relationships. I mean, I've been in relationships to where the girl was flaky as hell and went back and forth. I've been in relationships to where the girl preached whatever the hell she preached, but then you're out doing whatever you're doing with every other dude that you said not to worry about. I've been in relationships to where we love the shit out of each other, but we were so toxic for each other. Mm. So you had to sit here knowing that you felt the way, the way that you felt about the person and still know that you had to cut it off for your own well-being. Mm. And in all honesty, out of all the relationships, I think those are the harder ones is to oh, sit here and know <laughs> like, damn, yeah, I love the shit out of this person, but fuck. This person really makes me depressed as hell because they don't know how to love me the way that I feel I need it. Yeah. And the thing is, a lot of times you don't even know it. You don't even know what it is that you're really looking for in it. But you know that you care about this person. So you sit there and you try to force, you know, that square peg into that round hole all the damn time. And at the end of the day, you just need to understand, like, look, we're great at friends. We're great at whatever the hell it is that we can be great at. Mm-hmm. But together is not it. And a lot of times being able to just accept things for what they are is the biggest issue that a lot of us have when it comes to the mental health aspect. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of us are overthinkers. I know I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guilty. A lot of us are emotional as beings. I know I am. Yep. And we sit here and we try to play that fix it role a lot with a lot of things. Like, I can make this better. Yep. We can figure this out. When at the end of the day, it's like, no. You have to be able to make sure that you're okay, you're okay first. Oh, yeah. But if you're not okay, you're damn sure going to make it to where a lot of people around you are not okay. Right. But at the same time, when you are at a point to where you're okay, you're going to find out who the real ones are because a lot of people are not going to be around you anymore because mm. you're going to get to a point to where you're standing up. Not You're not just standing up for yourself, but you're way more verbal on the things that you want. Yep. You're not going to shy away from your, your standards are going to be, are going to be set. And if yep. they're not met, you're going to lose a lot of people because, and really you're not losing anybody. <laughs> if they're not sitting to your standard, it's not a loss. It's their right. loss in all honesty. Yep. Well, fuck that. You're just sitting here and you're you, what you need to do is thank them for showing you that they weren't worth your time anymore. Hey. And then that's about it. Yep. But that's that's the biggest thing is like we need to just learn how to accept certain things. We got to check our egos <laughs> and just start accepting it. Like, yes, we did this. Yes, I had this. Yes, I've had this many kids with this person. And yes, I don't want my kids to grow up in a household that I grew up to where my parents were separated and I had to choose between this one and that one. And I had one talking shit in my ear while the other one was trying to do everything they could. I don't want that. But at the end of the day, hey, shit happens. Yeah. Now you just need to make the best of whatever situation you have. Oh, yeah. Which, again, something that my father tried drilling into me so much, I just had to let it click on my own. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> that too, though, that little epiphany moment where you're like, oh, man, God. it all makes sense. <laughs> like, finally. Like, fuck you, Dad. Click, I click. you were right the whole time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly, and not us doing the same thing with our kids. We plant them the seeds, and we're like, "You're gonna get it. It's all right, though. Just wait. Just wait, wait on it." You, are, you see, motherfucker. I'm telling you, <laughs> jeez. Oh my god. But I do love the piece about like so, and and with that being said, clearly you've taken some active steps. You know what I mean? To like, god. you know, now that I mean, you made it intentional. So like, I know you've probably done a lot, but I'm curious, like, what did help you once you decided? All right, for sure, I gotta, you know, I gotta take hold of this mental health thing. I gotta make this better. What helped you on your journey? Oh, it's still unfolding. God. Honestly, don't even know what's helped. It's it's weird because you just you kind of just do things and you go with the flow. So a certain degree, at least that's that's me, right? So when I say you, I'm really just speaking on whatever the hell I did. Yeah. But I really just kind of just checked out, in all honesty, to a certain point. I got to a point to where my emotions were just so like they were just so. Sh- sh- they were so used up yet still so strong mm. that literally got to the point to where I really just checked the fuck out. And I don't know if I ever really checked back in a hundred percent, but I kind of like almost autopiloted my way into this, this selfish state that I'm at right now. And I know you've heard me say this a lot. And when it comes to our group, it's just like, yo, you need to learn how to be selfish. People take that word and look at it as as a negative word all the time. And it's really not like you need to get to the point to where you're selfish for certain things. And that was, I think that's my biggest thing. If anything that helped is to where I finally just said, fuck it. I need to really do me. I need to really just live how I want to live. And I need to just experience how I want to experience things. Yeah, I think once I started doing that and I stopped caring about how other people, you know, perceived me in whatever way they did, that I think was my biggest help in all of it. Mm. Because now it's literally to a point to where most of the people that I cared on how they saw me before, I don't give a fuck at all anymore. The only thing I worry about is just how, how much peace I have with certain things. Mm-hmm. And you know, what I'm really doing for my kids. Right. Am I getting them to the point to where once they hit that age, are they going to be able to take care of things themselves or are they going to know to a certain degree how to start to take care of themselves at least? Right. Because no one's going to know shit off of it, especially at 18, 19, 20, no. or whatever the age is going to be by the time they're older to where they can actually be on their own. Shit's expensive. <laughs> but it is. at least have that 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 foundation, that game plan, at least knowing that. Right. That That's the only thing I really care about right now. It's like, am I at peace? Am I happy with how some things are? And no, 75% of things I'm still not happy with. But that's my that's my journey. That's what I got to figure out. That's what I'm going through on a daily basis. And, you know, I think that's kind of what it is. It's just take, take that selfish approach more. Yeah. And stop caring so much about what other people think. And I love the and I love that you've you've been able to point that out for sure. But also like you're you've said that, but you've also said like, but also know how to check your ego as well. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. it's both things still being true though too. So it's like it's to a point where you can keep that balance, you mm-hmm. know, and be able to do it. But like I also love that you said all that, and you mentioned um, group. So I also wanted to caveat, you know what I mean? So like this is actually a member of I had a, I had mentioned it a while back. So like some of the uh, I'm not listeners, a member. I am the best member. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> the unofficial president. You know what I'm saying? Jesus. If you will. Um, but there is a mental health group that I had mentioned to y'all that I had wanted to start. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and there ain't nothing to it, y'all. Like, anybody paying to be in it? No. I'm not gaining anything, like, as far as, like, monetary or anything like that. Because I, I do love it. But it's, like, it was just a straight-up charge that I had put, like, mostly on Facebook, though. Because that's where I have the majority of my yeah, yeah, connections. Yeah, started. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Instagram, I'll put stuff and everything like that. But Facebook, I feel like I have more personal connections. And, like, you know, so I had mentioned it there. Yeah, Eventually, have, I like, might have mentioned. thousand people on there either. So. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, Facebook been the OG. Like, as the millennial I am, yo, like, when I started, Facebook was where it was at. Instagram yeah. came later, but I'm like, nah, Facebook is where, that's my mecca. Instagram's <laughs> for the bathroom, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> scroll, 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 you know scroll, what I'm saying? Scroll, scroll, TikTok. Right, I'm done now. <laughs> right. So true. And I had definitely put it on there, but yo, I was. I was definitely taking, like, from the beginning, you not only express interest, but you show up every time, sir. Like, yeah, I mean, usually once I get interested in something, it's, 
it's almost like a full dive into something sometimes. And I mean, that's kind of like a gift and a curse at the same time. But at the end of the day, I mean, if it's if it's something that I feel is going to be beneficial, why why the hell not? Yeah. And I think that's kind of where like you know people will tell me all the time it's like, hey, you know, you, you dive into relationships too quickly. My thing is just like I want to learn now. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and take this baby step six month approach, waste fucking six months of my life because hey, we're getting old. Yeah, we're only in our mid thirties, but at the same time, it's like you got people who fucking died at thirty two, thirty seven. Some people dying at fifty and shit like yeah. that. So when you're really looking at it, more than half your life is gone, depending on where you really ended. Right, right. And I mean, shit, you got some people who don't even get to see that old of an age. You got some people taking their fucking lives because they're so fucking stressed out and miserable when it comes to certain things. Yeah. And then you got some people who are too stubborn to really take care of themselves to where they're just sitting here dying on the side of the fucking road and shit. So it's like you you just you got to. When you're interested in something, fuck it. Dive in. Yeah. Figure it out. See what it's about. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to learn quick. Yeah. And, and we did. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but I also love the fact that you're also saying, like, embrace opportunities. You know what I'm saying, yeah. too? Like, I mean, like. I mean, what the hell are you going to do? I mean, you're getting older. You're not getting younger throughout time. You're getting older. Right. So I was like, if an opportunity presents itself and it's interesting to you, at least check it out. I mean, so much shit that I got to at work was just me checking it out, being right. one of the service segment leaders. All I did was say, hey, what's this about? And they're like, you're in. Yeah. Right. And right. then I you're ended curious. up getting to the yep. point to where we've already cycled through three other members because there's a group of three of us. Yep. And I think... I'm the longest standing one out of the three that's in now. I don't even really like it's yeah. It's 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 weird, but I mean, when you're when you're genuinely interested into in something, go ahead, take the approach, dive into it, say fuck it. I mean, unless it's like, hey, I'm interested in learning how, you know, quickly I'm going to melt in this lava or something like that. <laughs> Maybe you know, not you're, that. You're okay. fine. You're fine. Just you're go, right. dive in, check it out. Yeah. And and just learn. Learn as quickly as you can if it's going to be worth your time or not. I Definitely. Mean, you know, nine times out of ten, it's probably going to be garbage, but then you're going to get that one out of ten. That's going to be worth actually diving into. And, I mean, even from the group there, we was able to, what, there was some network that we were able to do. I think one person told them, hey, you know, you sound like you hate your job. Come work at my job. Yeah. Got the other one. Um, Another one who wants to be part of the uh, Pride Parade. And right. And now... That's right. I'll let them know, like, hey, if you want to be in, just let me know if you can't get in next year, you can come run with us because my company literally puts me in a position to where we can do stuff like that. Yep. We're part of the parade every year, and they're open to more people. Yep. I mean, shit, you and your three kids were almost in it as well. My two kids were in it, and half the people loved my daughter because she was all damn gung-ho for it. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much my son because he'd rather be playing video games, but still. <laughs> exactly. He going to do him. But, yeah. And he was there. No, he was still there. Yeah, he was, he was doing his thing. There. He was doing his thing. Carried front and center. Carrying the flag with my daughter. And, I mean, shit. Now, they're probably going to be active about every fucking year. And I'm going to have to bring them all the time. <laughs> exactly. You know, set a standard. Yeah. <laughs> you got so to now deliver. it's like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing. But it is true that I love that. I definitely love, like, just being able to, like, dive in and do that. And I do feel you on life is just... It's short, but also, like, it is unpredictable, you know what I mean, in many ways. And I do feel you on that because, like, even um, very recently as, like, you know, this show is not necessarily going to air the same day that I'm talking about this, but there was um, a teacher at our school that is actually talking about his wife, who, I mean, his ex-wife, who passed away because, you know, like, they were, they're talking about pedestrian safety. So they were having a talk at Cleveland State today mm -hmm. about uh, Danielle Cronister, so may she rest in peace. But she was, you know, unfortunately, like, in an accident as well. And, like, you know, and, and even that, like, he had no idea that that was going to occur. Like, he came to work thinking it was just going to be a normal day, and he got that dreadful call that she was in the hospital, you know, for something that she didn't even expect. You know, he's thinking that hopefully he has time when he gets there that maybe she can be saved, and unfortunately she did not make it. And it was something that, like, something that occurred with someone else, you know? So, like, we also have these other occurrences that happen that we don't have, you know, that we're unable to prepare for either, you know what I mean, exactly. or have any control over. And it's like... The things that we do have control over, we should be able to provide more joy, you know what I mean? And more opportunities for like, you know, 
fulfillment, you know, which I feel like I'm also hearing from you and really build our passions. I love that you're doing this custom stuff with like freaking furniture and everything. I mean, like you're expanding your whole network and doing all these great things. And yes, I do love how generous you are in the group. That is what's awesome is that like, yep, we're building connections with people. You know what I mean? We're doing fun stuff. We over here, we went to a sip and paint. Shout out to Lacer because Bro, your sip and paints are dope. You know what I mean? And I I've been would. seeing her everywhere. I've been seeing everywhere her. now. Yes, I know. All over yes. the place. Bro, like, hey, Lacey. <laughs> Yeah. Shit, girl. yeah, she is definitely a local artist in Cleveland that is doing that thing. <laughs> and so it is dope, you know what I mean, being able to do that. And we do plan on going to this garden. We've been trying to do it forever. But God, we are yes. going to go to JP's garden. He's also a past guest. But, like, we're going to make it happen, y'all, because we are in a season of growth. We wanted to celebrate that in our group. And so we're like, we're about to plant. <laughs> we're about to plant some stuff. We're about to get outside. We're going to do the stuff that we've been talking about. Like, and really, like, put that into practice. And it is dope. And you're right. Like, I love that you are always extending that. And that's what's cool about it. Like, we need to have more community, more group groups more of us uplifting each other and also letting it be known that we all struggling <laughs> out here together yeah. we're trying to figure it out let's do that together you know what i mean and can we do that from a more supportive and uplifting place yeah i feel like a lot of people just need to and it's very it's very hard because again i was very non-confrontational or i was very yeah. not outspoken when it came to my own stuff for a long time but it really is it really does get to the point to where like you kind of just need to get out there and just just do. And I feel like some people in our group might be a little more intimidated on actually speaking their minds. Yeah. And actually being honest about what's really going on because right. a lot of people, I mean, shit, you grow up a lot being told to kind of suck it up when it comes to a lot of things and that's from men and women. Yep. Because I mean, as men, you're sitting there growing up being told, "Hey, you're a boy, you're supposed to be strong, you got to grow into a man." Yep. As a woman, you get told, hey, you're emotional, you need to lock it up and show less emotion. Right. So on both sides, you're kind of fucked growing up. <laughs> and I mean, it's kind of something that I guess our generation to a certain degree is trying to break. Absolutely. Some of them a little too much. You kind of need to toughen up when it comes to some, some, some stuff. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, that's where certain flaws come from the older generation. I mean... You know, as great as my father was when it comes to a lot of stuff and as much as I can appreciate, I can say like, yeah, he still had flaws growing up as, you know, for me as a kid, because there was a lot of times where I couldn't express my emotions on certain things because of how he would handle, you know, me crying when I was injured or anything like that. Yeah. I grew up with the mindset to where if I'm not bleeding, I shouldn't be crying. Yeah. And when it comes to a mental standpoint, you're never bleeding. You're mm. bleeding inside. Yep. But you ain't got no blood to show. Right. So I shouldn't be crying. I shouldn't be expressive. I shouldn't do this. But again, it's not to blame him. He didn't know anything. He was growing yep. and figuring shit out. Yep. So I can honestly say when it comes to that approach from when I was growing up to the approach that he has with all this shit now, I'm very surprised. I'm very shocked and kind of amazed that my father has the approach that he's had on a lot of the shit that I've been expressing and discussing with him because it's a 180 difference from what the person I grew up, mm -hmm. how he handled a lot of this stuff. Right. And I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. And then, I mean, I don't, again, don't know where I was getting at with that one, but yeah, I mean, Oh yeah, <laughs> right. No, it's a lot there, and it, and it is a lot to take in, and I'll see. But like, I agree. But then it's also cool, like, and because you have this like refreshing perspective, now you're able to look at things like you said from a new yeah. lens and see all these things that you didn't see before, that like were were there. But like now you can appreciate them more, like you said, you know, and be more grateful and yeah, take it in. I mean, that's the. I mean, this I guess is kind of the whole thing. I mean, I've always, like I said, I've always tried to be the type to learn and understand how to handle certain situations and just know how I guess I've always been the type to just want to understand how things work yeah but I never was a type to understand how I work myself right I always just assume certain things or just went with what I was told with certain things or kind of try to stick on a certain path and I've grown to learn that I'm a very abnormal person when it comes to a lot of things and I love it <laughs> because I ain't gotta be like everybody fucking, else. I hate the norm. The norm that I see on a lot of people on a daily basis is so annoying because there's no uniqueness when it comes to a lot of people right now. And the unique ones are often black sheep from everything else. <sighs> like there's so many people I know who are some amazing ass people, but they're right. looked at 
like they're too outspoken they're too weird they're too loud they're too crazy they're too this they're too that you're too angry you're too blunt you're too aggressive you're too this and really no those are the people that actually have a better understanding of who they are right and they're just expressing it and not taking your normal shit anymore yeah and that that's that's fucking awesome you got to sit there and you got to just embrace who you are and you got to take your approach to what it is that you want now oh yeah absolutely and with that sir you got anything like this you got other goals that you got for yourself not you know what i'm saying on this journey of life <laughs> you've already done a lot but i'm I just saying no idea honestly at this point like i i know that the company i work for i love the shit out of my company right now yeah um the opportunities the ability to want the desire to really grow their employees and the opportunities that they present for their employees is is really remarkable on so many levels Dope. so when it comes to a career standpoint at the end i think that's why it's so weird for me to sit here and trying to figure out what goals are because when it comes to a career standpoint there's so much that i can do within my company that there's really not much for me to say when it comes to setting goals. Yeah, there's certain advancements and stuff that I want to take with my company, but they're so open to allowing you to kind of find your That's your good. flow and your movement and what you got going on that I'm at a good spot right now with entering and kind of taking a role in these different groups, these different programs and these different things that I can take my time in figuring that out. Right. And then when it comes to how to work, you know, certain thing, I mean, one of my biggest things is just kind of trying to find – find a new place to move to but other than that i mean my biggest goal right now is to just continue figuring out the different things that are you know that are still going on up there let's go and to, you know just to continue to come out better on the other side of it yep and i mean other than that it's just i guess my biggest goal right now is to just help people understand or at least get a blueprint to getting to being able to understand what it is that, you know, you kind of not so much need to do because everyone's going to take a different route. Right. But at least understand, like, you have you have a path that you can take. You just haven't found it yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that. And it's through your um, company that you learned about that organization, Semicolon. You brought it up Semicolon before. Semicolon was a huge, is a huge one because, I mean, it, it was a channel that allowed, you know, a lot of people within the Huntington community to be able to have somewhere within our like Huntington Facebook that we have <laughs> to be able to reach out, express, have people come together, you know, and kind of help each other out mm. to a huge degree. I mean, even the bracelets that I have on right now came from the organizer who pretty much orchestrated and created the entire group. And I mean, there was always a part of that that I was already into. Right. But even then, like, being able to do more on the outside, it's, it's that's kind of my pull right now when it comes to a lot of other stuff. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. So if folks wanted to learn more about, you know what I'm saying, all the stuff you got going on, like how to connect with you, maybe they want to get into Huntington also, they also want to network, is there ways they can connect? I mean, you can find my open Instagram, which is just Wally Mellon. Uh, I never remember how to spell that shit. Uh, W-A-L-L-Y-M-E-L-L-O-N. It's literally just a sneaker on the front, big Puerto Rican flag right there. Connect with me there. It's open. Reach out. I mean, it doesn't have to be literally strictly for anything customizable. It could be for anything anyway. If you're looking to just reach out, I mean, I'm pretty responsive when it comes to a lot of things. Um, and then from there, any of my contact info, I mean, you'll be able to get right from then and there. Absolutely. It's all in one place. Yeah, and I mean, if you follow her, you'll be able to find her. Exactly. She, or hit me she up. Has all my shit. She has all my stuff everywhere. Exactly. Well, there you go. Or And of course, with that being said, make sure that y'all definitely tap in if anything resonated, all of that. But also make sure you tap in with us, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So like, on Santana says, we want to be able to see y'all continue to let us know. But I definitely, of course, we both would love that feedback. You know what I'm saying? So if there is anything that like stuck out to you, that you wanted to learn about, whatever, I'm always open to that. So you know what I'm saying? And as I continue to get other people, if this is your first time listening... 
cool. I especially want to hear from you. You know what I'm saying? And like, what attracted you, what you would want to know about it, how we can help you more. You know what I mean? We continue to help each other. So, sir, thank you so very much. Welcome. For the beautiful <laughs> conversation. Um, you know, for being here, your time. But definitely, you gave me some gems. You know what I'm saying? Some things to think about myself. So I hope y'all are doing the same. So, you know, and shout out to, again, um, you know, everybody with all the things mental health, but we especially want to give a shout out to men for men's mental health um, awareness month and also just, but again, in general, any mental health efforts that can be taking place, we shout you out, anybody that is dealing with that. And then we also want to shout out our organizers that are helping with that, including Semicolon, um, all the other great organizations that exist. And we do encourage you to get connected, you know what I mean? And find your community. Speak up, man. Speak up. It's yeah. my biggest thing, man. Just speak up. Please. Yep. Don't stay quiet. So thank you all so very much. Thank you. And uh, we're going to do it again on another Feel Good Friday.